today we are going to dig a ditch. Do you like hard work? To dig a ditch is hard work. Especially the ditch we are going to dig today. And the ditch we are going to dig has a name. It is called your own effort, effort, your own struggle. And as we know, you cannot live the Christian life on your own effort. That's why it is a ditch. To dig a ditch, we need something to dig with. <clears throat> and we need a tool. And the tool we need to this ditch is called keeping the law. Keeping, keeping the law is doing all that the Old Testament law demands all the time. And the number of the laws is over 600. You know the law is only demanding but offers no help. My definition of keeping the law is like this. Things we have to do or think we have to do so that God can be satisfied with us. Or things we think we have to do so that others will be satisfied with us. Let me try to describe how this ditch is. Here are seven points that describe the ditch. And you can add a lot more if you want. Number one, it has a lot of rules, a lot of rules and commandments. Number two, it leads to slavery. You have to work hard and you will never be satisfied. But you will also find pride and that is number three. You find pride in the ditch. Since you have to trust in your own efforts, you have a way, you in a way are expecting reward. You can compare yourself with others and think you are better than, than them. Number four, you find a lot of religion in the ditch. When you keep the same rules as others, other people, the, the in-group, you get their approval. Religion doesn't like Jesus, it doesn't like the cross, and it doesn't li like living faith. Religion is clean and nice on the outside, but full of dirt on the inside. Number five, the ditch consists of human effort. It is not built on revelation, it is dominated by the flesh or old sinful nature. Number six, it does not create transformation because your, your driving force is the same. You are stuck in the power of sin. And number seven, the ditch is cursed and you find no fruit of the spirit in it. So you don't want to be in this ditch. <clears throat> The Galatians had received the gospel by faith. This is the only way you can receive the gospel. How will someone who does not know Jesus describe the gospel? Maybe they will say that we need that we have to stop doing some things and that we have to start to do some other things. That we need in our own effort try to become better persons. But the Bible puts, this, puts it this way. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. The churches in Galatia received some men who told them that in addition to believing in Jesus, they had to keep the law. They become, became confused and deceived by, the, by this message. So they went into the ditch, poor people. How will you react if someone with conviction and high esteem told you to keep the law? I don't think you would accept the message, but maybe we put some demands on our own shoulders, or maybe we feel that the Christian environment, the culture in the church we attend, puts demands on our shoulders. 
Is it possible that after having received the gospel, been born again and received the Holy Spirit, that we get confused like the Galatians and fall into the ditch? I believe this has, has happened to many Christians, sad to say. They started with the grace and wanted to continue with own struggle. Do you remember the story where David wanted to move the Ark of the Covenant? On the way, a priest thought he had to help the Ark from falling from the wagon, wagon where it was placed, even though God had said it was strictly forbidden to touch it. The priest then was struck to the ground and died by the power of God. This story illustrates very well the fact that salvation is from God alone. Human effort is in the way when it comes to salvation. I'm going to read uh, from chapter 3 in Galatians, from verse 1 to 5. <clears throat> you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing, if it really was for nothing? Does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law or because you believe what you heard? heard? <clears throat> so what is the explanation for what happens when people go from believing in the, in the Lord and trusting their own effort? In chapter 1, verse 6, I'm reading an interesting verse to you. Um, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. I need to find the verse. There it is. I'm shocked over how quickly you have strayed away from the Anointed One, who called you to him, himself by his loving mercy. <clears throat> so Paul was shocked over they had strayed away from Jesus. When we become believers, it is because Jesus calls us to a relationship with himself. So I believe the reason you fall into the ditch is because you go from having a relationship with Jesus to add rules in addition. Maybe it can be like this. I'm I'm praying too little. I'm reading too little in the Bible. I'm preaching the gospel too seldom. And what is the motivation in what you do? Is it to make God satisfied? Maybe I am thinking, if I work harder, maybe God will be more satisfied with me. The danger by thinking like this is that you never become satisfied. All the time there is something that needs to be improved and it is not easy to be satisfied with others when you are like this. The Christian life is a life based upon revelations. It starts when Jesus reveals himself and what he has done. We need to act in consistence with the revelations we have received. And now I'm going to read from chapter 2 and verse 11 to 14, and I'm still in the Passion Translation. But when Peter visited Antioch, he began to mislead the believers and cause them to stumble over his behavior. So I had to confront him to, fa fa to his face over what he was doing. He enjoyed being with the non-Jewish believers who didn't keep the Jewish customs eating his meals with them. Up until the time the Jewish friends of James arrived from Jerusalem. When he saw them, he withdrew from his non-Jewish friends and separated himself from them, acting like an Orthodox Jew. Fearing how it would look to them, 
if he ate with the non-Jewish believers. And so, because of Peter's uh, hypocrisy, many other Jewish believers followed suit, refusing to eat with non-Jewish believers. Even Barnabas was led astray by their poor ex example and condoned his leg legalistic, hypocritical behavior. So when I realized they were acting in inconsistently with the revelation of, of grace, I confronted Peter in front of everyone. You were born a Jew, and you were chosen to disregard Jewish regulations and live like a Gentile. Why then do you force those who are not Jews to conform to the regulations of Judaism? So here we, we see something interesting. Um, for instance, uh, Peter, before this man, man came, who he was in a way afraid of, he was uh, having fellowship with the, the non-Jewish Jewish believers. But when the, the man who he was afraid of came, he <clears throat> were acting like an Orthodox Jew, fearing how it would look to them if he ate with the non-Jewish believers. So um, religion or this this kind of um, this kind of um, Christianity, if you can call it like call it that, creates fear fear of people and fear fear of how it would look like. So Paul had to confront this hypocrisy. And, and we too need to keep watch that we do not become religious. So we have to keep watch and not keep the law. Next time we are going to look on how we can get up from the ditch and maybe we also get time to study how we can stay out of it. Till then, stay safe and stay away from the ditch.